And just like that, good to see everybody. Hope you had an awesome weekend. The lights are red. I need to change these lights real quick. I just realized they were red because I don't really pay that much attention to them, even though y'all do. Let's do blue. How about that? Is that better? I can't change the light on the thing. Oh, that's cool. We'll do two colors. Good to see you all. Uh, listen, it's been a heck of a week. Uh, we had some good red in here. We've had some good green to follow it up. What else do we have coming next? Well, let's get off into it. Why don't we? Crypto After Dark, and let's go. If you haven't done so, please go hit like. It costs nothing to hit like. All right? After you hit like, please hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything and subscribe. Why? So you can see everything we're doing. We're over 10,000 people now. We're up to like 10,100. So we're making slow, minor little moves here one at a time. I'm excited that we're getting the exposure at the same time. I don't want to get too big. We'll talk about that in a little while. So, all right. Let's start off, by the way, make sure I got good audio. Um, should have some background jazz for you guys there. Let me know if you like the background jazz. And if you don't, I can turn it off. I just don't want to. I have multiple people ask me, why is it so quiet when you do a live stream? Well, first and foremost, I've got kids. So I try to keep it quiet in here as much as I can. But, um, you know, some smooth listening seemed nice. That's why I did it. All right, so the thumbnail. Why did I do the thumbnail? If you guys don't know who Paul Wall is, Paul Wall has a rap song called Sitting Sideways. And in the song Sitting Sideways, there's lots of low riders, but they do them different in Texas. They ride on swingers, which is a certain type of wire wheel that sticks way out. All right, uh, but still, they're low riders nonetheless. But Sitting Sideways uh, is a reference to the charts just going sideways and consolidating for a little bit. What I'm, what I'm talking about here is this replication from 2016 to 2024. Now, first, I'm in linear mode here, as we can see. All right. Um, this is only for the example. Whether I do log or linear, it doesn't matter. It's both pretty darn accurate. All right. Uh, we'll say hey to everyone in a second, but please go hit like. 53 people on, 28 likes. Go hit like. They're free. Um, so, interestingly enough these things seem to be eerily similar and i don't want them to be exact i just want them to be kind of close so the difference here is since it's a much 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 higher market cap than it was eight years ago you know you're going to see different percentage moves than you saw way back then all right uh the world wants us distracted by background noise i prefer to concentrate on the one thing i get it i know i'm sorry so, uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, I don't think we'll have as much of a percentage drop overall or percentage up overall, but that's not a bad thing. That still gives us plenty of opportunity to make money. And in fact, during these moments of consolidation, like we see right now, I think these moments of consolidation are a little bit easier to follow than they were back then. Now, I'll preference that with saying, hey, this is barring the world shutting down again like it did last time, right? The world just kind of powered down on us and kind of shut down on us. I don't want to see that happen again, right? Um, sorry, I'll change the colors. Hold on, I'll just turn them off. How about that? There you go. We'll just do the red light. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious about this consolidation. Uh, it seems to be doing similar to 2016, only on a slightly different replication. So first, this looks scarier on the left, which is 2016. All right. It had a very, very aggressive push down, uh, right off the bat after hitting the peak. And now you see that we've got a similar move down. However, it's a little bit less aggressive and a little bit more snappy in both directions rather than being all down, right? It's a little less snappy. And because of that, it's a little higher up on the scale instead of being lower down on the scale like it was back here at the 50 or the 618 fib, right? Now, we're much higher. Uh, hold on. I'm confused. Hold on. Okay, I'll get to it in a second. Anyway, I'm I'm curious if we get a similar move just without the snappiness. 
And what I mean is, I don't know that it automatically comes down this far. Perhaps we don't make it that far and we stay up here around the 236 and the 382. And why do I say that? Well, it's right near that 60,000 level, which a couple days ago's candle actually hit. It was 60,000 and some change, not even 60,000, but 60,000 nonetheless is a psychological level, right? That psychological level plays on everyone's mind. It plays on computers' minds. It plays on the creators of the bots that run the computers, right? Uh, they know psychological levels just like we do. So I've got it kind of drawn out there what I think's going to happen. There's also another way to look at this, which might not happen the same way. So uh, looking at this, the one on the right, all right, I've got the yellow line is the FOMC meetings. Right? You can sit right there. It says FOMC. I have the same things drawn over here. It's just behind the camera, which I cannot drop off. There we go. It's just behind the camera right here. Right there, FOMC. Uh, what is FOMC? Well, that's Federal Open Market Committee. They're the ones who run the federal interest rates. Typically, when they cut rates, we get runs up because risk is on at that point. You see more money coming to the market. And typically, when they raise rates like they did back in 2022, you tend to see the market have a pullback. All right. Now, not always, but that's what we're looking for for a scenario for us to have a bull run. And for us to move these prices forward in a very aggressive manner like we want, right? So, of note, this one over here was about, I don't know, like 60 days or 20, roughly 20 days after having. Over here, again, about 15 days after having. So, it's not exactly the same, but it's close, as you see. Um, I don't think we get this snappiness. I think what we're going to see over the next little bit is some more of this just back and forth action. AKA sitting sideways, just moving sideways, chopping away. Um, it's not a guarantee, but I see it happening. So if I throw in some moving averages here, and it's not necessarily just about 2020, 2016 at all. It's just interesting comp comp um, you know, com comp com comparison here uh, to see it and know that it's not that far off. So you'll see back here, it attacked this 50 day moving average really aggressively. And we haven't really done that over here at all. Uh, we haven't even gotten close to it yet. So that again leads me to think perhaps we're going to attack this 50 day moving average aggressively at some point. Now, the interesting piece of this is that's just Bitcoin. We're continuing to see other altcoins make very snappy moves in up and down fashions. For instance, in the last two days, credit and DMTR, which is Demetra, have both done crazy gains up, all while Bitcoin has been flat, which is super interesting to me. Um, what does that say? Right. Well, that tells me that even though Bitcoin's having its fun and doing its thing, that alts are hanging in there, but it's still not quite alt season. Now I'll explain that again in a moment, right? It's not quite alt season. Yes, we will have altcoins that move along with Bitcoin, but it's not quite alt season. Well, let me say hey to everybody real quick. Uh, when Mullet, Mullet doesn't get it either. I hope I explained it. Opal Laura, good to see you, brother. Opal Laura. Dab, what's up? Electric Ken, good to see you, bro. Uh, Colo Colo, how are you? My wife told me to stop making crypto puns. I told her to stop worrying about the volatility and start enjoying the decentralization. She left me in a flash crash. <laughs> Trying to mat with them. Kadoots. Uh, pretty good. <laughs> Canon Pro said face palm. <laughs> Uh, Preppy Slater, what's up, 786? Stoked to see you, bro. How you doing? Uh, Jay Gross, good to see you. Greetings from the land of loonies. <laughs> That's pretty good, dude. Uh, educated Dummy, good to see you, John. What's up, Mark? Raging Beagle. Um, what's up, Jeremy Cousin? When I first read the handle, I thought, <laughs> I thought it said, <laughs> shit in sideways. <laughs> That's pretty good. That would have been even better because YouTube would have banned us. Uh, Frumpo, what's up? Good to see you, brother. Burner, Slutty Roo, how are you, ma'am? Uh, Cheese, what's up, brother? Jag, what's up? Um, Dreamer, how are you? Jeremy Munro, Red Stuff, good to see you. Uh, Distinctive Shine, how are you, brother? Um, Tex, what's up? Um, the People's Champ, see, Tex gets it. Um, all right. Lunatic Prophet, good to see you, brother. Jordan's Paradise Music said he's at Substitute Teaching right now, but what's up? Good to see you, brother. Um, It's quiet. Play some techno. 
The only issue with charting is not doing it correctly. I would agree. Um, you know, that's another thing that we need to talk about at some point is you'll see lots of people sharing charts. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Let me finish. Um, Alan, Miss Allie, how are you? Uh, JP, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Glad you're alive. <laughs> I would have known we could have Paul Wall on the call. See, this is getting this is getting interesting now. Uh, Gam goes, what's up? Cycling Cotton, what's up? Josh, Terry Brennan, good to see you. Bullish CEO, what's up, my guy? So let me address that first, what Mullet said, right? Uh, the world, I don't have a problem with charting until someone does it wrong. So recently I've seen a trend of people copying and pasting stuff and acting like they're doing it, right? Uh, it started a couple, it started a while back for what it's worth. And it's always happened for what it's worth. Um, I tried to help someone. Uh, so I can't talk about it yet, but I'm working on getting some stuff taken away. So um, it's been happening for a while where people will take uh, stuff that you've done and own it for themselves like they've done it. Uh, and I don't have a problem with something if you give your own spin to it and you do it your way. But when you start copying and pasting stuff and just taking stuff and acting like you did it, well, that's, that's name, image, and likeness. That's NIL stuff, right? That's copyright. You can't do that. Um, that's happening a lot more recently. Uh, in fact, pretty much anyone who gives signals or calls. So I've learned recently that, not recently, I'll say a year or two ago, I learned that a lot of those people are just copy-pasting with MevBots on Telegram, right? So they take a Telegram trade signal and they copy it and send it out and they call it their own. Uh, I've got a problem with that, right? So uh, that's lying. Let's just call it what it is. It's lying. I don't like that. But again, there's nothing I can do about it. I shouldn't hate the player. I should hate the game. Um, I can't knock the hustle. I appreciate people uh, getting that money. Same time, I prefer not to do it that way. Uh, that's why you'll never see me do calls and signals You'll never see me do that. You'll see me talk about what I'm buying and selling, and that's it. I'll never tell anybody what to buy and sell. That's not what I do. It's simple TA for everybody to see, and we try to keep it simple for a reason because you over-convolute this stuff, and it gets to a point where you don't want to do it anymore, right? So let's keep it simple. Let's not, over let's not overdo stuff. Let's not use big fancy words that people don't understand because you and you immediately stop listening. Once I start using words that don't make any sense to you, you immediately think you can't do this. So then you won't listen anymore, right? Um, we tend to attract a crowd that's a little older and the younger kids don't tend to come watch what we say, right? I kind of, I kind of like that for what it's worth. I'll keep the kids out of the big, big uh, adult room. So be very careful who you're following because you're likely following a copy and paste unless their name is on that chart you should probably watch out because they may be lying to you. All right. So let me get to ones I was going to talk about. Let's start with Demetra. So I pulled Fibonacci retracement on Demetra here uh, from the top to the bottom. And what I did was I went to CoinGecko, right? Went to CoinGecko and I found the all time high of Demetra, which is DMTR. Now I didn't buy the exact bottom of this. I didn't buy this all the way down here. Why? Well, for what it's worth, I bought other stuff and I just missed it. Right? I can't buy them all. You can't catch them all. I'm sorry. It's the way the game works. In case you guys don't know about Pokemon, it's the same way. You can't catch them all. Um, but what I did do was when this thing made a consolidation and I found a level that I liked, I found a spot to buy. And I ended up buying right here at the green lines that you see. I actually had 4000 and I sold half because this thing wasn't doing what I wanted it to. So I de-risked a little bit. Anyway, pulled Fibonacci retracement from the top to the bottom and I used the recent consolidation that we had down here at the beginning of the year as my anchor point for my Fibonacci retracement. That spit me out an ending point on the Fibonacci retracement roughly in June of 2025, roughly in the summer of 2025. We'll see how that works out in due time. So far, these fibs look pretty darn accurate. So once I bought this, this thing had a breakout of that diagonal line that you see right there. Very simple, simple breakout strategy. When you see a breakout, you take the trade. If it goes how you want it to, you add more to it. If it doesn't go how you wanted it to, you wait for it to go back to where it started. And then you think about adding some more one time. Simple breakout strategy. All right. This is weekly. So as it's progressed here, I've gotten happier and happier about this. But 
It broke the 382 fib at roughly a nickel. Once it got over that and I got up to 12 cents, first and foremost, I was a little bit flabbergasted that it got that far. And I'm like, hey man, I'm killing it here. I'm in the I'm in the green. I don't need to do anything. Then it went farther. Meanwhile, this is why Bitcoin is going up. In the last couple of weeks, Bitcoin, Bitcoin hasn't gone up. But look at Demetra continuing to go, right? Continuing to make moves, continuing to push north. Now it's approaching the 618 fib overall. I'll note to you, where is the resistance over here to stop this thing from keeping on going, right? So what did I do? Seeing that I was getting up to a level of about $16,000, starting with $2,000, be honest with you guys getting itchy fingers i was up to like thirteen thousand eight hundred, and i said you know what i think now sitting at the ball field just before i got home just before i came in here i was at the baseball field with the kid right so he's having practice he's out in the outfield shagging fly balls there's nothing i can do so uh pull out my phone and see that it's way up it was up 27 percent or something like that right right before eight o'clock i'm like dang man so i broke out my phone took some profits. I took 25% roughly. So I got $3,600 profit out of this. My original buy-in was 2000. So what does this do? Number one, I got all my original money out plus 75%. Understand how that works? I had 2000. I got my 2000. I actually took 3,600. So that's actually 1600 more than my original 75% more. So I made my original plus 75% on this and everything else here is now house money. I can take it all out or I can simply leave it alone and let it go. Before you guys call BS on me, I'm happy to share screenshots to you in the discord of exactly when I did this and exactly how I did this. I share everything that I do in the discord so you guys can't call BS on me. All right. I actually already shared the screenshot over there so everyone could see it. Uh, it's still one of my biggest positions, even after taking $3,600 off the table. And I show you this because what I'm saying here is I don't want you to just chart Bitcoin because that can sometimes be a mistake. This is a low cap altcoin that has done excellent, right? I bought this because of consolidation that looked like it's going to have a breakout and it did. And since it's had that breakout, I've reaped the benefits. I got my original money out. I'm going to use that original money on something else now. And the whatever's in here now is a free roll. I can leave it be for the rest of the bull market. You understand? I'm risk free on this asset. Plus I've made 75%. Can't argue with that even a little bit. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Let me see what else you guys are saying. Um, hey, what's up crypto moon boy? You got to get a new name, my guy. Yeah, t I'm sorry. It's red. I'll turn it off in a minute. Um, what's up, Parker? Good to see you, brother. That's Tim, I believe. Uh, JP's on here. The red, the red light in the decanter is dope. It, I can make it change colors. Um, it's a fine line between giving signals and analyzing charts. Uh, yeah, it is. However, if you join a Discord or a Telegram group and they're just openly giving signals and calls, I'm sorry, brother. You're being lied to. And that's all there is to it. Uh, I, I'm not going to name names. Good luck. I'll say that much because you're rolling around with people you shouldn't be rolling around with. Um, Nelson, what's up, my guy? Um, let's see. Teach someone to chart. You teach a skill for life. That's exactly right, Cheese. That's why we do this. Take profits or I'll take them for you, Mullet says. You see how it works, folks? And I know that sounds like a mean thing to say, but it is dead honest. If you don't take your profits, me or someone like me will take them. Very simple. Um, made it up, made it to a live for the first time. What's up? Good to see you, Kevin. Um, if it has a candle, chart it. Exactly. And you can even chart things that don't have a candle, right? Because I learned that with charting my son's height weight ratio. Okay. Uh, I read the benefits from being a 786 member. Thank you, brother. All right. So that was, hey, what's up, uh, Guillermo? Good to see you, my guy. He's out in San Francisco right now. So let's look at a couple more. This was just one uh, example. This is Demetra. So, uh, Creddy was another one that I bought. I've had information on it and thought, you know what? I'll buy this and I'm not sure when or how much, blah, blah, blah. I added this screenshot from CoinGecko, which when it was $5 million market gap, I think it's 10 million or something like that. Now I can update this later, but I put that on there just so I could be reminded. Right. Uh, now 
this thing did a similar move to Demetra. If you see, it's not terribly different, which was a reason. Oh, I'm lagging out. Hang on. There we go. I'm not lagging anymore. When I, when I catch it lagging out, I'll stop for a second. I can't do anything about YouTube. It's not me because I changed my bit rate way higher. I'm at 6,100 kilobytes per second. So um, this had a similar move to Demetra, right? Where it broke out. Once it broke out, I'm here for it. I actually bought this down here all the way at the bottom where that green horizontal line is. Told everyone I did it. Uh, and I got my initial money out back up here. Now I added some more to that because I had some free capital. It's shot back up. I got that free capital out too right here where it says take profit 750. I got my money back out plus some. What ends here is now is free rolling. Uh, I think this is up to about $3,000 now from an $1,100 investment. Not going to be mad about that at all. That's way up. Plus I've got my money back. Again, another free roll. Just like Demetra, it's broken that 50 fib. It's heading toward the 618 fib, one step at a time, all right? There you go. Looks to me to be very similar to Demetra. Cool. Again, another example of Bitcoin kind of playing around like it wants to go up or down or sideways consolidating, yet altcoins are slowly catching up. Now, it's still not altcoin season. I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, another one that hasn't done it yet, or here's idea, by the way. Uh, this was brought up in our Discord, which is why it's so important to be a part of the Discord. I would have missed this otherwise. $3 million market cap when I bought it, which was down here at the 001. Now it's 006. That's going to put it at around $10 million. Uh, probably maybe a little more. But good news is it's broke the 236 and heading toward the 382. Nowhere near as high as Demetra and Credi. But heading back to resistance and this one actually does have some pronounced resistance here where the other ones didn't see that right there that blob of candles creates resistance so when you try to push up against it you get pinned back down okay very simple the way resistance and support works it's really not that complicated uh, but as long as you're underneath it it's resistance you'd like to be over top of it if you're not over top of it you're underneath it it's resistance i'd like it to be on top so there's support and then you typically don't see the price fall back down through it unless we're in a bear market idea has done very 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 well um another one that looks very similar to demetra but hasn't done it yet is velo not velodrome velo under the 236 but it's got this very similar movement to demetra demetra kind of chopped out sideways a little bit here and then shot up afterwards if this one does anything like demetra oh my gosh I've hit a home run because I've got twice as much in this as I had in Demetria. Hopefully I get that move that I want. If not, I'm cool with it and I can be patient. I don't mind waiting a little bit longer. These fibs on this one run out at the end of the year where Demetria's run out more toward the summer of 2025. So with that one may continue to do well. And that's why I didn't sell it all. I only sold a portion. Selling that portion makes it much, much more safe. Uh, this one I'm up on, obviously. I'm up 100% on it, but still, I would like it to be way, way more like Demetra. I bought this one all the way at the bottom down here at this green line, all right? And I've added a little bit more to it. This one's a little messier, but it's got all my buys and sells on it. And here you go. Like if this thing gets up to this yellow box right here where Demetra's almost at now, that's $325,000 for me for one chart, right? That's insane. Now, can that happen? Yeah, am I planning on that happening? No, I'm being realistic. It's probably not in the cards for that kind of thing to happen, right? More so, I want you to see that a lot of these charts are having similar moves, similar breakouts. Go find them for yourself. Uh, if you don't see them, please ask. And where do you ask? Glad you ask. Where do you ask? WAP.com forward slash team 786. Our Discord closes in one month. If you're not in there, you're not getting in. Simple as that. All right? No more after one more month that's it who's in there is in there and who didn't get in can just sit and watch from the sidelines simple as that um we all we don't want it to get too big i'm not going to be other people who are like i want a three thousand people in our discord pay nah uh-uh that ain't how i do because first of all i'm not addicted to pills and i'm not a dope pet so i don't need all that kind of i don't need all that kind of people i'm just a normal guy right um 
Plus, it gets cluttered. There's a lot of degenerate stuff that goes on, and I don't like that. So in an effort to keep the kids out of the room and keep the adults together, this is why we do it, okay? Uh, limited access. If you're not in, you're going to get left behind. So that's where we talk about a lot of these. That's where I found a lot of these. Um, Arbitrum is another one that uh, I've got a good bid in, but again, she's fluttering around here, not doing too much. Honestly, kind of frustrating, uh, but it's all good. ICP, interesting chart here. And the reason I say this is it's right at resistance. However, it fell and fell to support. It fell right to the 382 around $10 and a half. And this thing bounced, I mean, perfectly on that 382 fib. Do you see that? In my opinion, that caught support. It looks like this zone here is going to hold forever i'm hopeful it does uh holding this zone opens up a lot of possibilities all right i want to see it happen one step at a time how about that we have to break this 50 fib right here which is what is this about 15 and a half 16 bucks we really need to break this range once we break this range there's not a lot to stop it on the way up and i'll show you what i mean all right I said right here is our next resistance that little blob of candles right there same thing i showed you on the other chart with idea similar story here on icp this is the first level of resistance that it ran into after breaking out once it gets over this it's all just kind of choppy but it doesn't stop until up here all the way up here at 23 bucks that's a hundred percent from where we're at this one you know i like the chart because it was small and all down people want to call this one manipulated dude stop what what does that help or hurt you it doesn't in either direction there's nothing you can do about that so drop the narratives dude grow up you don't need those narratives to get you where you're going you really don't you don't need any of that uh i'm hopeful this thing holds ten dollars even if it can hold ten dollars even we're going to break through here and we're probably going to push up eventually up to this $23 level and up to the $50 to $80 level. I would expect that from ICP. Um, one step at a time though, okay? The good, the more so the good news is here, this thing just consolidating sideways after hitting support. That's a big deal. Us holding that support level creates far more leverage to move longer and farther in the future. Um, um, let's see. So Mullet says, uh, you still using KuCoin? I got locked out. Uh, yeah, we can help you with that. Jump over in the Discord. Uh, we can get you a Palau ID and get you set up. That's how I have it. I have Mexi, KuCoin, Bybit, BitTrue, all of them are KYC'd. Uh, it works great. You do have to pay for that, but it works great. Uh, if Velo hits that, I'll have 15K bottle. And see, there you go. A lot of people are expecting that. And I don't want you to follow me on that. I want you to do your own thing. Take your profits when you think you should. Uh, your boy's a velo whale. No, I'm not a whale, but uh, I've seen what some other people have, and I've got a fraction of what other people own. Um, uh, the red stuff. There is a way I don't. I think you have to watch ads to earn. Um, you can earn a little bit by using Brave, but not very much. I stopped using Brave Browser because it doesn't connect with some of the things that I use. Uh the prompt stops me from working on OBS Studio a lot. So that's part of the reason I stopped using it right there because I'm using OBS Studio right now to broadcast this, right? Uh, if I turn that on, OBS Studio starts acting up and doesn't want to deliver. Uh, FTM is another big runner in the past two weeks. Look at that thing go, dude. Just straight up. Because it went straight up, I went ahead and started taking profits. It got all the way up here to resistance. You see these resistance blobs over here? That was a sign to me to get some to get some profits. I bought this way down here. Okay, cool. I'll get some profits. All right. Uh, I didn't sell it all. Only sold a quarter. Again, the other three quarters, well, it can keep going. And I'll use this 25% somewhere else. And I already have. What did I buy with it? I bought Link. Why did I buy Link? Well, a couple reasons. It's consolidating at a high level. I've seen a lot of other charts from here break north run through sniper run through the golden pocket which is 618 68 and 70 71 on fibonacci retracement i've seen it run up past those all the way to the 786 886 level way up here all right 
Because of that, I measured and said, well, how much gains is there? Just up to Sniper's Alley 100%. Past all-time high, which it looks like Link might challenge all-time high, uh, being that it's ahead of the game already from where I've purchased. Uh, all-time highs, 200%. Not bad. So I've taken profits that are locked in, and I've put them over here on Link, which to me looks like it's got at least 100 to 200% gains left in it. So the 2,500 that I took from FTM, and here now is almost a lock to go another 100% and turn into 5,000, possibly even 7,500. And that's not even breaking all time high. If we break all time high and we run up here to the FIB extensions, that's 450%, 692%, and 1,200%, or a 12X. A 12X on $2,500, you guys do the math. Uh, that's like $26,000 or something like that. I can't count that high. I have to put it in a calculator because I'm an idiot. Uh, love that phantom chart. Yeah, I'm floored by phantom. I did not expect it to do as well as it did, but damn if it didn't. Uh, and because of that, I'm tickled with it. I'm going to leave it be. Uh, I got my money out. I got, I'm take that back. I didn't get my entire investment out. I bought 3,700 worth, right? And I only got 2,500. The rest is still unprotected. I understand that. But it looks like my buy being way down here is clear of all failures here. So as long as this trend maintains, as long as I'm above the daily 50 moving average, which is way down here at 58 cents, as long as I'm above the 821 EMA, which I am, brother, put it in cruise control. There's nothing to do here except sit back and watch. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. A little less freaking out, a little less stress, looking at weekly charts more now instead of daily. Why? Again, it's not as hard. It's less complicated. And a mistake that I made last time was over trading, right? I sold too much stuff too early or I would sell too much of one asset and not leave enough to simmer. Right. And basically take a little profits and leave the rest, which is what I just showed you on every single chart that I've shown so far. I didn't do that enough. And I know that. And since I know that, I'm going to take it to a different level this time. And I'm going to try to leave some stuff alone. Learned my lesson last time. And I don't want to repeat those failures. Right. Some of them I did. I sold all of my Rio like an idiot. Shouldn't have done that. Should have sold half. Sold all of my link. Could have just sold some. But I did get profits. Can't be mad. Uh, now I'm back in. Cool. Same thing with AVAX. That's why I did AVAX like this. Just throwing my extra profits over here into AVAX. Same thing I did with Solana. Throwing my extra money over here into Solana. Some extra profits here and there. Throw them over there. Leave them be. Doing fine. Can leave it alone. I can in fact lend AVAX and Solana now if I really wanted to. And borrow against them and buy more altcoins. Um, we like to talk about XRP on the channel. Why? Because a lot of you own XRP or have owned XRP or are still on the XRP hopium bottle. I know you are. You don't have to lie to me. Uh, we can, we're all adults. We're all adults. We can talk amongst each other and be adults about it. I know you're having a hard time letting this stuff go. It's not easy. Uh, you're probably pretty hooked on Telegram, probably pretty hooked on Twitter and of the three, probably hooked on YouTube the most. You see a lot of influencers go on there and talk a big game. Uh, they'll never sell or uh, they'll tell you how amazing the asset is. Yet nothing ever happens. So I ask you, if it's so awesome and it's going to do so well, how come it hasn't? Well, they'll give you tons of excuses of why it hasn't. Well, it's the government's fault. Oh, it's this guy's fault. Oh, it's because you're fudding, which is one of the stupidest words in crypto. Um, yeah, I don't care about any of that. I really don't. I really don't. I'm just doing the chart. Good news is we have a lot of charts for XRP and we can see a lot of stuff. It's really no sense in arguing about it. So I've talked about this multiple times. So I'll do that again here. Buy zone between having and the yellow line, 2016. Buy zone between having and the yellow line, 2020. Buy zone between having and the yellow line, 2024. Sorry, let me connect my trading view back. Now, 
Uh, I drew this one a little different underneath the trend line, right? Because a lot of these other ones were underneath the trend line and haven't broke out yet. I think we get our breakout right over here, post May, maybe between middle of May, middle of June. Worst case, Ontario, July. But I think it'll happen before then. I think we get a move off of support down here before then. At the worst case, I think 50 cent. At the best case, 60 cent and we're floating around there now and i say 60 cent because it hasn't quite broken through the trend line just yet still playing around thinking about it and then even when it gets through here it's liable to get stuck one more time underneath the 75 cent barrier here once it finally does crack north i bet you we get something like that and then we get a move north it's going to fight the 75 cent level to the tooth all right it won't give up easy that's tough, tough resistance. This is why it was imperative to get above this before the end of the bull market last time. You couldn't hang on to it. You couldn't maintain it. And back down she comes. All right. Don't want to see that, but it's the fact. I can't deny it. I wish I could. I can't. Uh, is what it is. Uh, let's see. Golden Pocket Sniper's Alley. What's after that is all-time high. What does it mean by hitting Sniper's Alley? That's the 786-886 level you'll see me draw on these charts, which is right here, 786-886 level. And I have them in red so they're easier to see. Uh, essentially, this level a lot of times is causes a hiccup on the chart. It can't quite get through it. It's a bit of a myth that, in, that uh, influencers do. They'll say, and this is important, it's 7,000% just to all-time high. Hey, guess what, folks? It doesn't get to all-time high very often, all right? And because of that, that's a misnomer. It's hard to judge stuff by all-time high. 786886 is, well, 78 to 88% back to all-time high. And that's why I use that level because we've found through searching, through searching through data that a lot of times you see this level right here in front of you get hit and maintain. Uh, so it causes a hiccup, and you're seeing hiccups right now like Ethereum, right? Makes sense? Uh, you'll see that all the time. That's why we are called the 786 Assassins. Be decisive. Make your decision. Exactly. Thank you, Cheese. Justin Cleveland, Moonsoon, not quite. <laughs> uh, ISO, baby. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. We need the banking system to fail, right? Uh, that's the point. Yeah. If it's an, if the value of your crypto is in USD, you definitely don't want the banking system. To fail. I don't want the banking system to fail. I just want them to get over themselves, uh, which will probably never happen either. Hey, what's up, bro? Good to see you, brother. I'm down to 40 K XRP. That was at a huge step for me. I went Naga broke and diversified best move ever. Um, Zav says, thank you. You're welcome, brother. And rug. How about rug coming off that hopium needle, dude? How's that feel? bro? How's it feel to not be an addict anymore? 40,000 XRP is still a ton. That's well over $20,000 worth. That's still a lot of money, right? Uh, I know people who have a million or two million XRP, which flabbergasts me when I hear those numbers, uh, and they'll quote unquote never sell. I have talked to some people who have finally started to realize you can't live this I'll never sell life because that doesn't get you anywhere. And while you may think you know all the answers to the financial futures, you don't. So, even they're starting to realize, hey, man, we probably should have took some profits. Even the influencers that pushed you the most in the wrong direction are even now saying, hey, maybe this time get some profits. <laughs> uh, that really pisses me off. Right? You made your money on YouTube by lying to everyone and getting everyone pumped up on that hopium needle, dude. And now you're backpedaling? You don't get to crawfish now. I want you to go out there and shill it harder than you ever have. So I can sit over here and tell you how wrong you are over and over and over and over again. And that's not me being cocky. I don't want anyone to take it that way. I'm not trying to be cocky. This is a group effort. It takes a team to do this. All right. I'm just a guy out here. I'm just the idiot that you're watching. That's all. Let's do a couple more. Um, and a disappointing one for me that's doing better than I thought it was, but still disappointing. Algorand. So this one's stuck in between the 236 fib and the 382 fib. And as I just showed you, Ethereum is all the way up at 786886, way up here. Bitcoin, all the way up to all-time high. Do you understand what I mean? It's not alt season now. 
Algorand is a very popular crypto and it's nowhere near where it needs to be. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second, right before we finish. Uh, but we're stuck in between 236 and 382. Demetra, Credi, the ones I just showed you were up above this, heading in this area. I think almost everything will get up to the 50 fib area. Even scams will get up to the 50 fib area. Even Ponzi's will. That's probably as high as they get. But we'll see. I don't want to speak too soon on those. Um, that being said, that's 25 cent now. That yellow box up there where the 50 Fibonacci line is, which is the halfway point, that's 50 cents. That's 100% gains. So just minimum 100% gains here isn't bad. Uh, you, you'd be pretty well off to find any, you'd be pretty hard up to find any other place you're going to get 100% gains and be mad about it, right? Uh, that's what crypto does to us, yeah? Uh, we make 100% gains and we complain and say, well, I could have made 400% somewhere else, right? Uh, you know, that's why I say a little greed is good. A little greed is good. You just can't be too greedy. Uh, today, I felt like I was being too greedy, and that's why I took some profits. I, I, you know, I, I understand myself that I'm, I'm too greedy sometimes, so I have to reel myself in. Um, it's important. Now, I'll tell you what I'm talking about here with Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin dominance. What does Bitcoin dominance matter? The ticker is BTC.D. BTC period D. This is the amount of money in Bitcoin amongst all cryptos in the market, right? So in a percent form right now, you can see up here in the corner, Bitcoin is about 53% of the markets right over here. Also 53%. So that means over half of all the money in crypto is in only Bitcoin. I ask you, is that going to change a ton from now to the end of the year? With all the ETF money coming in, with people learning about crypto little by little, is that necessarily going to change a ton? Well, I honestly don't think it will a ton. I think we're likely to slip down here to about 50% and then make one more gasping run at some point here. Take one more gasping run up before we finally start to roll down toward the end of the year. And that is when alt season starts, 2025, not now and the reason i say this is here's the previous cycle breaking the trend line just like it did back right, right now hasn't broken yet finally broke and once it broke it made a sweep up and then bam snap at the end of the year gone here's 2020 2016 way back hey look it broke down made one snap up and then it was gone at the beginning of the year same thing and that was the little alt season back in 2017, which there wasn't many coins back then, was there? Litecoin, XRP, XLM, and a couple others. Ethereum and a couple others. And that was it. So until this fails, there is no alt season. It's very, very simple. And even when this fails, we get a short little alt season help, but not a real alt season before Bitcoin gains back traction. And this is what I think may propel us, you know, toward the end of the year being above all time high and potentially moving up there toward our FIB extensions by the end of the year, which is a big change for me because I really didn't think that would happen yet. I thought we would be, you know, more around 786, 886 level at the end of the year. And we're already there now before we ever got close to the end of the year. And that's a big deal. So I'm able to own that that happened faster than I thought it would. Uh, but nonetheless, the charts still look really similar, maybe a little farther percent wise ahead. Timeline, it's right on the money, all right? Uh, and I have halvings marked. You can kind of see those too, right? Right there's halving. She broke down dominance right near halving. Uh, same thing in 2016. It was actually a little bit after halving. Oh, no. I've drawn that here the same way, right? I drew that after halving. So trying to be kosher with this. I think we do see dominance break down. And I think it probably gets to at least 45 to 40% before the end of the bull market's over. We'll see if we get a blow off top or not one step at a time, all right? Uh, I don't want to plan ahead too far. Now, here's the Bitcoin weekly chart that I use to track my own asset, right? This is my own buys and sales. I've got the FOMCs lined out here in yellow. I'll take those off. I already have them on another chart. I wonder if it's going to disappear. No, I don't think it will. So let me take this off. Let me take this off. I just leave having up there for the reference, right? As long as we maintain this red trend line right here and we keep going up, I'm cool with it. 
I'm cool with it. It may go all the way sideways and tap this trend line and then go up. I'm all right with that. What we've also found out is typically, thank you, Nick, and a couple other guys who shared this, but it's pretty all it pretty often happens that between 15 to 80 days after breaking all time high that the price doubles. Now, if we did 80 days from breaking all time high, which was over here, that would put us somewhere around the end of May or June. Remember when I said that earlier? Right? Kind of makes sense now. I don't bank on that. I just think it's possible. All right. Uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. You know what I mean? It's pot. Oh, I got orders going over here. I got trade orders going on bots. So I think it's possible. I think it's possible that we break out here through all time high. We get up here toward 104 to 130 by the end of the year. And I know that sounds crazy now, right? We've seen great momentum here. And yes, indicators are still screaming high. Look at that weekly RSI. If this pulls back down here, similar to 2016, which I'll show you now. I'm just going to show you RSI here. I believe Alvin was asking about this in the Discord today. Right here, pre-having in 2016, this RSI had a peak. Look at here, pre-having 2024, RSI having a peak. After this, it dropped down to about 55 on RSI. More so, that's around the action lines that I talk about all the time between 40 and 50. If this RSI drops anywhere down here between 40 and 50, brother, she's taking a punishing. Now, I don't think that actually happens because of that. I think it, I think we probably stay at a higher level here. We probably stay up more around 60. So if I see anything like that around 60 or so, probably just going to have to be happy with that and take what we can get and move on, right? Uh, let me scroll back to this one. I've already clicked off of it here. Didn't mean to do that. It's in linear mode, which is super annoying, dude. There we go. All right. I've got the comparison. I keep this up. This is my second tab I keep open just so I can kind of watch uh, and see how close now compared to 2016 is. And it's not that much different from 2020 either. Uh, it's not, not that much different at all. So I think we could see a push up here toward that 100,000, 120,000 level by the end of the year. I'm hopeful because if that happens, man, that opens up the door for a blow off top and that blow off top could take us up here around $300,000. I know that sounds nuts, but it's possible. All right. I don't expect 2016% numbers. That was insane. But I would like to see some uh, you know, so I'd like to see it I'd like to see it uh, blow off the top because that'll pull altcoins a long way with it. Uh, including everyone's favorite XRP, right? We'll see XRP do great. And that'll have everybody who's been holding on since 2017 a chance to finally get paid. All right, I want to see that for everyone. Love me or hate me. I want to see you make money. And I wrote right here into bull run targets. I've had to kind of change that. Um, I think this may be the end of 2024. One step at a time though. All right. Arb's a slug. I agree, Don. I have a plat NFT. Ah, no, right, dude. <laughs> Honestly, I keep in mind mullet because I'm going to sell them uh, to someone else at the end of the bull market. And I'll just, I'll, chalk it up as a loss and use that to offset some of these taxes that I'm going to have to pay. Because if you guys didn't know all this money you're going to make, it's not tax free. Don't get your head in some space thinking you're going to make, you're going to rip the government off. No, I'm going to pay taxes. You're going to pay taxes. I'm hoping I can just offset as many as I can with some of the losses that I took last time. Right. One day at a time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, cheese. You're right. Let's discuss this in zoom. Uh, four hour income and right, right. Uh, I'll go always lags. I agree. Sold 80% and made a lot than Forex would have sold. Exactly. Uh, big Dex. You see what he said right there? Blockchain backed effed me. All right. He's talking about a certain particular person. I won't say that guy's name. And I'm glad you said it wrong. So I don't have to say his name, but I'll put it this way. If anyone's got gear they're wearing or constantly pushing one asset on their live streams or say they'll never sell something. Most of what they say is BS because if you'll never sell anything, that means you're not actually trading like you talk about you are on your chart, right? And that goes for anyone else who's following anyone else you see. And they say, I'm never selling this one. I'm a maxi. I'm, I'm going to hold this one for the, if that's the case, then you're not really trading and doing what you say you're doing. You're just talking about it and not actually doing it. There's a difference between us. Okay. I'll actually do it and I'll show you that I did it. I'll mark it on the chart for everyone to see. 
And I'll even share screenshots for you to see my screenshots of my wins or my losses, right? I've got no problem talking about the losses. Good news is I haven't lost much in the last year and a half. It's been pretty awesome, actually. So uh, the, the losses have been $100, $200. Oh, my God, it's so much better than losing $10,000, 20000 30000 Let me tell you, it's so much better. <laughs> uh, I, you guys who have lost a lot of money will understand. Uh, I, I made some huge mistakes last bull market, and I still did great. So because of that, I'm going to learn from those mistakes and do it a little better this time. Fair enough? Fair enough. Um, Aptos. Aptos has been an absolute killer recently. Look at that one. Again, I feel like a glutton for not selling some of this. I bought this down here at nine bucks. My average, actually, I bought it lower than that. My average price here is around seven bucks. Seven bucks. So, what do you do here? Do you leave it alone because it's doing well? Do you take some profits and skim them and stick it somewhere else? I thought about it. It's a tough call, man. Tough call. I hate to be the guy who screws this up. Oof, but I've probably got, you know, 10 grand in this. Oh, gosh, Mighty man. This, these numbers kind of scare me. And I know some of you might watch this and say $10,000. Oh, that's nothing. Dude, that's a lot of money to someone like me who's been poor his whole life. I never, I had this moment today in the Discord, as a matter of fact, where I just had a moment and I was like, this is right after I sold Demetra. I said to myself, I'm like, dude, in the last two days, you made $6,000 in profits. You know, you started this with $6,000 and you're doing that in two days now. And I had like a, you ever have like, you know, when you're getting pulled over by the police and you see those blue lights and your heart drops for a second, those butterflies you get, that adrenaline dump. I got that sitting there at the ball field today. I was like, <sighs> When I saw those numbers, and even though that's not a ton of money, it doesn't matter. That's so much money to me, right? Like it gives me a little heart, just a heart attacks thinking about it. You know, that's a lot of money for me. So I'm doing my best over here, uh, trying to control my emotions. It's not easy, even for me, right? I'm just a guy. I'm nobody special, nobody important. I don't want y'all to think that I'm some superhero or something, because I'm not. I'm just a normal guy like y'all, trying my best to do everything I can, dude. Uh, it just gets wild. You can't sell if no one's buying. You can't buy if no one's selling. Who's selling on the way up? Thank you, Cheese. Well said, brother. Um, never a bad day to take profits. I still say that every day in the Discord, Mullet. Every single day I say that in the Discord. It's never a bad day to take profits. I keep telling everybody that because that's something we learned in the last bull market amongst ourselves, didn't we? Never a bad day to take profits. Who cares? It kept going. Well, good thing I took my piece. All right. Um, Let's see. You made this, you made it this far stick into a formula. It works even if it, even if it's a bit more at stake now. I know, dude, but still, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I fully agree. I'm going to keep sticking with it. It's a very basic strategy. Simple breakouts, follow the trend. When the trend fails, stop. That means it broke out the wrong way. So stop. Uh, we can get fancier with moving averages and exponential moving averages and Fibonacci retracement, pivots, clouds, everything else, right? We can use a ton of stuff to find our confluences, but essentially it's a simple strategy. Simple, simple stuff. This is trending up very well. So what, what, here's an example of what I'll say about Aptos. So here's what I'll do. As long as this green line maintains, probably just going to leave it alone. I think this likely breaks all time high. It's pretty obvious it's going to, isn't it, everybody? Uh, and when it does break all-time high, I like 30 bucks, 37 bucks, and 50 bucks. Keith will be taking profits at those levels. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't do financial advice. I just teach charts. That's it. So, uh, and I talk about what I do with my own money here. Please don't copy me. Please don't be that lazy. And if, I, if, if you are copying me and I say something like, Please don't be that lazy and you continue to do it and you fail. Brother, don't get mad at me. All right. I told you not to do it. I told you not to do it. I don't do signals and I don't do calls. Um, no one ever got wrecked taking profits. You're dang right. Um, cool. So AVAX looks like it's trying to come back after yesterday because I had a pretty ugly day. Uh, making a bit of a consolidation in head and shoulders right here on a low time frame. That looks like that might come back down some. Uh, it's been really, really hot, though. So, you know, it's par for the course. Demetra has pulled back 
really well for my take profit. Look at that, dude. And maybe I'm wrong and maybe it goes up more, but that feels good to take profits and watch it come back down after you, after you take profits, man. That feels good. Uh, CRV is one that I've looked at maybe adding some more to because it's so far down. Look at these. I showed you multiple charts that were way up here, yeah? This one hasn't even broken the 236 fib yet. It's literally scraping the floor. Thought about throwing some profits over here. One of the lessons that I learned last time was don't stick your money in the heavy laggers because it doesn't work the way you want it to. Stick your money in the front runners and let them run hot until the laggers break out. And this one looks like it might have broken out, but all it did so far is back test the trend line and ain't done nothing else since. So I'm stuck kind of waiting on uh, CRV here. And I can't really do much until it gets running. I don't want to throw any more money into this until I got some proof. You know what I mean? I think I might not get that till June. Kind of what it seems like to me. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Bought CRV last week. See, there you go. Right. Cheese says kiss principal personified. Thank you. Cheese. Keep it simple. Stupid. That's what, that's what kiss means. <laughs> she, uh, slut rooster. Ma'am says got a leverage on CRV. Let's go, dude. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. I haven't done many leverage trades at all. Why? Just didn't need to. Um, let them be. Just let them be. Uh, gala. I have a lot of gala from a node. Uh, we done some math on this, dude. Let me hit y'all with some crazy numbers real quick. I got it drawn out here, kind of what I think it does. So this will be the last one I do, right? I bought this gala node 2021, February, right? Right before alt season started. Bought this in 2021, paid $6,730, I think, for it. I made probably $20,000 off of node rewards during the bull run. Decided at the end of the bull run that I wouldn't sell any rewards. I would just leave them alone. Throughout the bear market, I have accumulated, up until now, 157,000 gala tokens at a nickel apiece. If this gets to 50 cents and I get 250,000 gala by then, that's $125,000 in just node rewards. At that point, a gala node, which is 2 million gala to buy, will cost $1 million to purchase a node. $1 million. Folks, I will happily sell my node for half a million and get 120,000, 125,000 in node rewards. That's a potential 300, I'm sorry, three quarters of a million dollars off of just gala. Do you understand the numbers here of what could happen? That's scary, dude. That's scary. One step at a time, though, right? This one right now is playing around with the 382 fib. We'll see if it can recover by the end of the week. If not, short term down for more up later. I think it at least gets to 17 to 25. My upward hopium level is 50 cents. At 50 cents, brother, look, I'm going to have to make a decision about selling up there. Not going to lie. We'll see when we get there. Uh, it's got the angle that shows it potentially wants to get up here one step at a time. I don't think it breaks all time high. Guess it could, but I don't think it does. Um, so listen, that's been a heck of an hour. Dude, that went by fast. I wasn't expecting it to go that fast. So thank every single one of you for coming. Thank every single one of you for watching. We had 96 people on here at one point. That's dope. Thank y'all. Appreciate you coming in and out, hanging out with us. We do this every Thursday. So come back next Thursday. All right, we'll do it again. Every single week, same time, 11 p.m. on the grown-up hours. Don't miss out. Let me leave you with this, all right? Make the best of your todays, the worst of your tomorrows. You could have been anywhere in the world. You chose to be here with me. I'll never understand, and you'll never understand how much I appreciate it. Thank you. And last thing, and just remember, if no one else told you they love you today, Keith loves you, all right? Be strong and be smart. You got this. Sky's the limit. I'll see y'all guys on the next live stream. Peace.